So today we're going to think a bit about our interpreter in homework five. We're going to try to refactor it so that it becomes easier to implement in the next version, which we'll submit for homework six. So let's revisit our reduction rules. We have, I want us to look at these two rules. The first one is for values and the second one is for function application. I'm making explicit the memories being passed. So for instance, in the case of values, we start with a memory unchanged. And if we get a value, we return the value as is and the memory unchanged. Similarly, in um, function application, what we have is we have an initial memory h1, which we use to evaluate function ef, right? And then that returns me a memory h2, which we use to evaluate the argument ea. That in turn returns a memory h3, which we use to evaluate environment push. That in turn returns a memory h4, which we use to evaluate the body tb that comes from the closure. And that finally returns a memory h5, which we return. So in this notation, the triangle is specifying the order in which I should evaluate each of these expressions. And it, we are also making explicit the variable, the memory. So this is memory h1, memory h2, and so on. Let's look at how we can encode the various operation. As we know, e1 down arrow with e v1 should be represented with s eval expression. So if you're evaluating an expression in homework five, this would be a d. Um, and we pass the memory, which is the h1, right? For instance, in this case would be h1. And then the environment, which in this case would be E, and in this notation is also E. Um, the return of that is one EFF, right? It's an EFF. So what is the EFF state? EFF state is gonna be the memory that outputs from evaluation. So in this case, if I'm evaluating uh, this, let's look at this one, which is easier. If I'm ev evaluating EA, the return is these two things, right? And this is an EFF. So EFF state will return H3, and EFF result will return V of A. So this is an example of how you can program that. So I just take both, and then I unpack them, and I create a variable for all three of them. Okay, so now I have my new memory and I have my new value. If I want to do a push, I would do something like this. And let's say I want to chain the memory from mem1 to mem2. Okay, to finally, this should be memory3. Let me actually pause the video and, and correct that. Okay, I've corrected the mistake. And now I see clearly memory3 here. And this is very similar to what you would do um, in this piece of code, right? Where you are evaluating something, you take the value and the memory, you have to unpack them, pass h3 to the next instruction, which is the push. And then after the push, you take h4 and pass it to the evaluation. It's very similar to what we have here, uh, where we're threading the memory from one to the next. But as you can see, this is quite morose, right? First of all, it's error prone, as I just showed you, with a copy-paste error, I did a mistake here. Um, and this should have been memory 3, but I did memory 1. Um, additionally, if I do a mistake and instead of writing memory 2, I write memory 1, I will be ignoring whatever happened here because I am not, I'm ignoring the return value of this memory. You have to be very careful in how you write homework 5. But the question as good programmers is, can we automate this, right? That's what you should always be asking as a, as a programmer. I see repetition and I ask myself, how do I make this repetition go away? So that's what we're gonna be studying today. Ideally, if we, let's say we were, we abstract away, squint our eyes and we kind of 
see a very repeated pattern, right? Where we take a value, take this original memory, get the return value of that, and then we thread this memory down here. So there's this unpacking going on. What I actually just want to talk about is just the result. But indeed, what I ha have to keep doing is this unpacking and moving of environment. So wouldn't it be nice to kind of make the memory handling implicit? If we squint, squint our eyes, we would get something like this, where we would have this fancy define that would do the memory threading for us, that would take the EFF, would pass the memory that results from this instruction back to the next one. So it's also passing some star, and this star is the memory that is keep the being passed implicitly, right? So in this diagram, we have H1 and H2 and H3, but I also showed you a slide where this was all implicit. What I'm trying to show you in from here to here is just where memory is implicit here in this little star in yellow. So can we do something like this? And the answer, yes, we will do something like this. So how do we write uh, such code? What we see is that we have these effectful operations, right? These operations that are returning an effect, which we know is the state, is the thing that is being implicitly passed around. So we need some way to thread these values. And we have a way to as define a, a variable that holds the result of an effectful operation. So that's what we're going to try to learn. And by the way, this code right here above can be seen as this formalization, formalism here on the bottom, just a mathematical notation for the code above. So now we're going to digress a bit with an example uh, in the next video. We're going to digress a bit with a simpler example so that it's more manageable. And then I'm going to ask you in the homework to kind of do this the same, but for uh, homework five.